Now moving on to our next subject. Well, it's up, then it's down. There are continual conflicting reports about the U.S. dollar. Now, one day we hear that it's strengthening, and then the next day we hear that it is weakening. What exactly is going on with the dollar? Well, first, let's take a look at this. U.S. dollar has sharply slumped after a government report revealed an unexpected jobless rate rise. The report showed that the number of Americans filing jobless benefits rose to nearly 480,000 people. This came as economists were expecting a modest drop in jobless rates. U.S. stock markets also fell on the disappointing report. The monthly jobs report from the Labor Department is seen as a key indicator on the health of the economy. It once again cast doubts on the U.S. economic recovery. Now there are growing fears that the U.S. Federal Reserve could step up what it calls quantitative easing and pump money directly into the lagging economy. Critics say the U.S. has been printing the dollars without tangible reserves over the past several decades. They say America is the largest importer of goods in the world, runs the highest deficit in national debt, buys other countries' products and pays in paper in return, be it greenbacks or bonds. This has created huge inflationary trends, unemployment and financial disparity in the countries forced to trade in the American-imposed world reserve currency. Now it remains to be seen whether the latest fall of the dollar is going to give the international community its deserved share of the global economy. I'd like to welcome my guest to this part of the program, turning to Paris, uh, economist Mr. Mike, um, sorry, Mr. Max Kaiser, and uh, from California, Professor of California State University, Mr. Paul Sheldon Foote. Thank you both for being with us. Uh, going back to you, Max, in uh, Paris now, is the dollar in a free fall or exactly what is going on? Well, what's going on is you've got the banks in the United States are committing a financial holocaust, probably the worst holocaust of the past 100 years. What they're doing is they're destroying real estate values, jobs, wages, and pensions. And they do this by flooding the market with more debt. Now, debt in the form of U.S. dollars. As your package accurately said, the U.S. has no reserves upon which to issue dollars. Therefore, by definition, every dollar that is issued is debt. This debt holocaust is wiping out the middle class on purpose because the rich people in America want to be able to buy those houses, those millions of houses out there that people are still living in. They want to buy them back for maybe one penny on the dollar and this is a financial holocaust by design. The American bankers are holocaust provokers. They should be in front of a court of human rights and taken up on human rights abuses and all hung. Now, Max, you're saying that it is by design, but uh, with what you're saying, if, if it's for the rich, the benefit of the rich to destroy the middle class, it, wouldn't it in effect destroy the economy as a whole? No, because if you're a Goldman Sachs banker, of course, you're completely hedged against this phenomenon. Plus, you're buying gold, you're buying silver, you're buying tangible assets. So you're fully hedged. So you are not taking any risk. It's okay to simply wipe out that middle class. It's a holocaust, just like we saw in World War II, an entire holocaust of a people. This in America, we're seeing the holocaust of the middle class for the benefit of a few extraordinarily greedy, corrupt bankers on Wall Street, principally Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and the gang. All right, Mr. Foote, do you see it the same way that Max Kaiser is seeing it? Is Okay, I think I have lost uh, Mr. Foote. Are you on the line? Okay, I think I have lost him. Now, um, Max, going back to you now, is the U.S. using the quantitative uh, easing of uh, printing of money, basically, you think that they want to try to get out of this economic quagmire? Or are you basically saying that they're continuing to print the money basically to put uh, the country more in this economic slump to benefit a few? Is that correct? 
Yes, yeah, it, it's a domestic terrorist attack on a subgroup, in this case the middle class. If, if, they're wanted, if they wanted to bring about a solution, the solution is very easy. Ring fence all the corrupt banks, put all that bad debt behind a firewall, like they did during the savings and loan crisis of the 1980s. They created the Resolution Trust Corporation. They ring fenced all the debt, and they restarted the economy by creating some new banks. And these new banks were able to make loans, and they could create inflation, which would have the effect of stimulating the economy. That's clearly the way that a solution would be offered. But this is not what's happening. Uh, so clearly we must conclude that since the bankers on Wall Street are not doing the obvious solution, but they're doing the absolute opposite of what should be done, that is to say increase the debt load by flooding the markets, destroying houses, jobs, wages, and pensions. Now, Max, let me, let me stop Federal you right Reserve there. Let, that, let me interrupt you right there. Max, are you telling me that there are no independent economists or no one in the country, in the United States, that is uh, talking about this, going against this, and actually getting airtime? If what you are saying is true, um, do you see the role of the media? Are, would they be involved also with the bankers? I'm just trying to get an understanding.